Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and in this lecture we are going to look at some particular approaches to communicating without having to worry about frequency or phase offsets. We are going to look at the Costa's loop. The Costa's loop as you recall from class is an effective way for you to track the frequency offsets for PSK symbols. Remember in the case of PSK symbols you can essentially take a power of the PSK symbols like QPSK you can take the power of 4 and that allows you to estimate the frequency offset and then just successively ignore it or correct it. The other approach that we are going to look at is to use differential phase shift keying. In the case of differential phase shift keying you encode information not in the PSK symbols themselves but in the transition between successive PSK symbols so that when you are when you have frequency offsets then conjugate of the one symbol with the previous essentially tries to minimize its impact. So these are some things that we will explore in GNU radio. Let us begin by just adding a random source. So control F or command F say random source and let us also just increase our sampling rate to 192000 and we will make the random source have bytes going from 0 through 4. Let us then get our constellation encoder, control F for command F, we say C O N S T E and we will get the constellation object as well as a constellation encoder. Now connect these and the constellation encoder uses the object my C O N S T and we will call this my const which is a standard QPSK constellation. Now we are going to model the impact of noise by just adding or uh, by just adding an extra modulation over here. Let's just do one thing. Let's just do the up conversion. Control F or Command F. Let's say interpolating FIR filter. Connect this. We'll grab an RRC, control F for command F and say RRC, RRC filter taps. We'll use the same approach that we did. We'll call this RRC underscore taps. We'll set the gain to 4.9. Sampling rate is samp rate. 8000 is the symbol rate. And we need SPS. So let's create a variable, control F for command F type variable. And the variable called SPS, remember we always want 8000 symbols per second. So we'll say SAMP underscore rate double divide to make integer addition 8000. That gives us SPS and sets this. Now the taps is RRC underscore taps and we can make the interpolation SPS. Now we have our up converted function. Now we are going to add the carrier. So we'll just refine FC first. Control F or Command F. We'll say VARI variable. We'll call this FC. We'll make it 40,000. And we're then going to get a signal source. Control F or Command F. We'll say signal. Get the signal source. We'll call the signal source FC frequency amplitude of 1.414 because we want something close to root 2. We're then going to multiply, control F, command F, M U L T. We'll connect these. Finally, we just need to take the real part over here. So control F or command F. We'll say C O M P L E X complex to real. And that gives us the real part. And we have made our transmit signal, the upconverted signal. Now let's add a virtual sync over here so that we can continue at the bottom. So control F or command F and VIRT will have a virtual sync. We'll connect this virtual sync over here, call it up sync up converted. We will grab a virtual source over here and call it down up, up converted so that we get the same sequence we 
Let's also add Gaussian noise over here so that we can analyze the impact of noise as well. So control F for command F. We'll first create a range to control the variance of the noise. We'll double click this and call the ID noise STD. And let the default value be 0 0.01. And let it go from 0 through 3 step 0 0.01. That sets up our noise standard deviation. We'll grab a noise source, control F, command F. We'll say noise source. And the noise source should be a real noise source. Double click it. We'll make it float. And the amplitude will be noise STD. We will add the noise, so control F and we'll say add, grab the add operator, make it float and finally we have our upconverted noisy signal. Now we will repeat the same things that we were doing except that we will also add a frequency offset. So we need to mix this with a cos, mix this with a sine and then low pass filter except that we will add an extra frequency offset to those. So let me just create a range first for that. Control F for command F. We'll say range. We'll call the range delta underscore F. And let it go from, let's say, minus, uh, let's say minus 20 hertz to 20 hertz should do. I think that should do. Minus 20 hertz to 20 hertz. Now, we need two signal sources to multiply and mix these. So control F or command F. S I G N will grab the signal source. This will be our cosine source. Double click it, make it float. The frequency will be FC plus delta F. That is the difference. And we don't want offset or initial phase. We'll make the amplitude 1.414. We'll control C and control V this to have a copy and we will call this one the sign and we will add a negative sign to account for the fact that we have to have a negative here so that the mixing occurs correctly. We'll add multiply blocks. We'll just copy this control C control V make this into a float connect this over here connect the signal over here copy this control C control V connect this over here, connect this over here. We need a pair of low pass filters, control F for command F, we'll say LOW. A low pass filter to cut the two FC components, so we'll double click on this. Cutoff frequency will set to FC with a transition width of a thousand. And this should be float to float. Copy, paste, control C, control V, and then we'll just connect it over here. Connect this to a complex block, control F, float to complex and then we need an appropriate delay and a decimating filter. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to add a delay, control F for command F, let's say range first. So the QTGUI range, I'm going to call this delay and as always we'll make an integer delay going from zero through SPS. Since from previous memory the delay was 9, let's just set the default value to be 9 because that's the delay of these filters. So control F for command F, we'll say delay. Grab this delay block. Set this delay to delay. And finally we have a QT GUI constellation sync, control F for command F, C O N S T. And the constellation sync is just going to come over here and we are now ready to execute this flow graph. So let's run this. Oh, sorry. I need to decimate as well. I'm sorry. Before the constellation sync, we need a decimating FIR filter. So control F or command F. Decimating FIR filter. Let's just rotate this so that we get it nicely. And this decimating FIR filter is going to have a decimation of SPS and the tabs are RRC tabs. Now this decimating FIR filter output can go to a constellation sync, control F or command F. 
the constellation sync appears here. We connect the filter output here and execute the flow graph. And now you can see that the constellation appears very well. Now, here is the problem. If you add any sort of frequency offset, delta F, you see that there is a rotation. And this rotation is actually harmful because it doesn't allow us to get back our symbols correctly. In fact, by changing this, you sometimes don't even get it back when you go to zero because there's an extra phase and that is causing some issues. So, what are we going to do? We are going to add a costas loop in order to address this issue. A costas loop, as you remember, takes these symbols to the power of 4 and adjusts the uh, frequency offset from there to compensate. Let's just do control F or command F and type C-O-S-T-A costas loop. Now this costas loop requires three parameters. Let's connect this, connect this over here. Now we need the loop bandwidth. We'll choose that as 2 pi by 100, so 6.28 divided by 100. And order, in this case we are using QPSK, so we'll set the order to be 4. Now if you execute this flow graph, even if you increase this, you will sort of see that the costas loop still is able to figure things out. That is, let's say that if you make it this is 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and let's actually remove the effect of noise and let's make this 0, the costas loop is able to figure out the constellation points. Let's actually increase the number of samples to 10,000, number of random values to 10,000. So now let's also increase the number of constellation points. Now if you observe by adding this, okay, the reason for the lack of performance was because the step size was set to 1 over here. So we'll change the delta F step size to 0.1 so that the frequency offset is reasonable. So now if you execute this flow graph, you have this constellation. Even if you start adding some amount of frequency offset, you can see that the costas loop is tracking it. That is, it's not rotating. To verify that this is indeed the case, let's actually view the rotated and derotated constellations both simultaneously. We'll double click on the constellation sync. We'll increase it to two inputs. We'll connect the original constellation over the first and the rotated constellation at the second. So now, let's, let's check our flow, flow graph's performance. You see that both are overlapping, which is fine. If you now start adding the frequency offset, the blue one rotates because of the fact that there is a frequency offset, and the red one still is right there because the costas loop is tracking your frequency and phase offsets effectively. Of course, like we discussed in class, there is a limitation on how far you can go. That is, if you keep increasing the frequency beyond, if you keep increasing the frequency beyond the acceptable limits, then like if you keep going like this, you can see that the performance of the costas loop starts diminishing because of the e power j 2 pi delta f times t and that adds an extra phase. If you go further and further, you will see that the point starts spreading around and your SNR, uh, essentially your SNR limitation is um, come, going to come to 4, you're going to have a poorer performance than the original carrier recovery algorithm. If you go very far, then it loses the lock. If you go like, and if you add more noise, you start to have performance degradation. So overall, the Costas loop does simplify the implementation significantly, but it comes at a price and with some limitations. And if you make the frequency offset too much, for example, let's go, let's make it gradual, it locks. If you make it go too far, then it really doesn't work. It actually tries its best but fails. As a final example, let us inspect how differential phase shift keying can perform. We will create a simplistic example by just constructing the basic elements needed to understand this. Let's first make our sampling rate 192000. Okay, let's save this. No radio. And I'll call this DPSK4. Yes. Let us first get a random source. Control F for Command F. We'll say random source. Now, this random source is a byte that goes from 0 to 4. And let's get a constellation object and a constellation encoder. 
constellation object will place below constellation encoder we will place here so now we will double click this constellation object we will call it my const and we will call this my const so that it uses that constellation now we will assume that this is differentially encoded even though it probably isn't but let's just assume that the output is differentially encoded temporarily Control F will get throttle. Now let's add a bit of noise. So I'll say Control F. I'll say range, and we're going to just call this noise STD, going from zero to three. Step zero point one. Let us also get a delta F to just add a frequency offset. So control F will say range again and we'll make a delta F to model the frequency offset. And this frequency offset, let's say, goes from minus 10 to let's say default value 0 goes from minus 10 to 10 step 0 0.1 and then we are going to add noise and we are going to add an add a rotation. So control F or command F. We'll say add first. And we'll say connect this. We will grab noise source. Control F command F. We'll say noise. We'll grab the noise source. And then we will add a multiplier so that we can introduce the frequency offset rotation. And the frequency offset we can produce by using a signal source. So control F or command F will say signal source. And this signal source we will make sure that the frequency is delta underscore F. Now we have this constellation and we will also do a differential decoding of this and view both. So let's do control F or command F and say differential so differential phaser this will take successive samples and just perform the neck you know one conjugate the other which is the differential decoder basically and then we will grab a constellation sync say o n s t and view both of these so the first one is this one or well, let's double click this constellation sync and make it two inputs the first one is the original constellation with the rotation. The second one is the differential phaser. Ah, let us make sure that this is noise STD. Okay, now let us execute the flow graph. Now you will see, even with a bit of noise, let's say, yeah, that you have these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the constellation points. These are the differential decoder because remember the phase difference is pi by two pi by you know pi by 2 times 2 pi by 2 times 3 and pi by 2 times 4 so these are differentially encoded and that is that is the key to understanding that you know your your these should be robust to a little bit of frequency offsets let's check so now let's increase the frequency offset let's just verify what is happening so the frequency over here is delta f and we are multiplying ah this this should be connected over here of course we're multiplying we're now doing a frequency offset let's add some noise and if you perform frequency offset you can see that the constellation is rotating but the red one is not rotating the reason is because the red one is differentially decoded let us actually just increase the number of points by a factor of 10 and if you execute it with noise you will see that this constellation rotates while the other one doesn't and for slow rotations the differential decoding will work pretty well but as the rotation speed increases you are going to become somewhat susceptible to noise and that becomes a problem so in this manner you can see that because you're doing differential detection the red one is more robust and not does not have the propensity to rotate for especially for small frequency offsets in this lecture we have seen some techniques to not have to use a PLL or to a great degree that is 
let's not track the frequency but let's just use a costas loop to essentially track the frequency but one limitation with the costas loop as i mentioned earlier is that it works only under some scenarios and for psk constellations and not otherwise similarly differential phase shift keying makes use of, of the fact that you can embed information in transition between the successive symbols phases and that to an extent diminishes the effect of frequency and phase offsets however in the presence of noise it is less robust than a coherent detection strategy where you use a phase lock loop to lock and track the frequency the reason is because if the frequency offsets essentially affect your decision regions that is in the case of differential phase shift keying with four symbols if it takes you slightly away then you are less robust to noise because of the fact that you are not really estimating the carrier just hoping that it doesn't take you away these are some aspects that you have seen in this series of lectures and in the next sequence of lectures we are going to now look at the next impairment that is how the medium or the channel affects your performance how distortions introduced by the medium can be tracked and corrected thank you